Hello and welcome to part 7 of Firefox OS programming. In this part we will finish our little example here and make it to a storybook with a cover page and another page we will add later. Then when we have finished this example I'll show you the most common graphical user interfaces you can use with jQuery Mobile like uh, text fields, checkboxes and so on. And in all the other next parts which will follow we will focus on the web APIs of Firefox OS. Um, with the web APIs you can access the device's sensors like um, the GPS sensor to get the current location of the user or other sensors which are available on the device. But first we have some work to do. Let's first design our cover page and give it another title. So we go to the example and change the heading to my storybook. And the title should have also an explanation. So we add another div tag with the alignment of left. And within this text we explain in short what this storybook is about. This is my personal storybook. Enjoy the content. Enjoy the content. Let's load the page in our simulator and our cover is complete. Before we set up the navigation we have to write another page for our book which will become page 2. Well, simply copy the whole content of the current file and add another file here. I call it index2.html with the same content. Just change the heading to, for example, page 1 and the text to this is page 1 of my personal storybook. Then in our index.html file we have to reference the second page. Well, there are two kinds of uh, navigation you can use. The first is the one you already should know, a simple link to the other page. So if we press the button on the right on our cover page, the second page should be loaded and displayed. So we simply add index to HTML as the target of the link, save the file and if we reload it in the simulator and press the right button, we should come to the second page. Yeah, page one. This is page one of my personal storybook. Okay. To be more consistent, we will use uh, the anchor tag for all three links. So I copy it twice and on page 1, which is index HTML, the, the arrow left should have no function, so re re simply remove the link here. The second link, which is our home button, on the first page, which is our cover page, should also have no function, so its link is already empty. Just the arrow right should load the second page index to HTML. I save this file and the logic for our index to HTML file, which was the same file as index HTML, is similar. I also copy the anchor tags twice. Now let's think. The first link 
is the the arrow button left on our second page index to HTML. So if we click this link, we want to come to the first page again. So I enter index.html for the target of the first link. The second link is our home button, which should always lead us to our cover page. So the link is the same, index.html. And because now we are on our second page, index to html the third button, which means go to the next page, has no function, because in this simple example we just have one page. So let's save the file and see what will happen. We have to reload the whole um, app in the simulator, because refresh here is not enough. It remains on the second page and we haven't developed the new logic. So I go back to the dashboard. Uh, first close the whole simulator, go to the dashboard and click refresh again. So here's our example. I wonder, oh okay, as you can see here I forgot to replace the icon, um, the standard icons here. So go back to all two pages. First in index 2 HTML. This is of course the arrow L for arrow left. In the middle there is of course our home button. And arrow right for the last link is OK. And the same on index 2 HTML. The first link is the arrow L for our left. The second link is home for our home button and the arrow right remains for the last link. Save both files and now a reload refresh should suffice. Yes, we have our old header. Now let's see if our example works. A click here on the left should have no function because there is no page minus one or whatever. A click on the home button always leads us to this page which is the cover page. And now if we click the arrow right button we come to page one. Let's test this again. If we click here arrow left we come to the last page. Arrow right page one. Last page page 1 and on page 1 we click the home button and we are on the cover page again. This was multi-page navigation or external page navigation and what really happened is the whole second file index 2 html was loaded into, yeah, the, into the app, into the view but you can see if you click the right button there's a kind of transition here, a transition effect and this is very cool I think. But there's also another kind of navigation called single page navigation and you should use that kind of navigation which I show you now um, as often as possible and only use or only reload another whole file if there is really another whole yeah, aspect of your app to present to the user because usually mm, your apps or your pages will um, contain more than just this simple text they will contain graphics, icons, perhaps videos, what else and I don't think that within a <laughs> with a less than one second your whole page will be loaded here. So let's change our navigation to a single page navigation. This is very simple and let me show you how to do this. Well, 
let's go to our index.html file because this will remain the only file left in our example if we completed the single page navigation. What you have to do is define your pages within this one HTML, HTML file. And to do this just declare another div element directly before your header element of the first page and give it a data role div data role and the data role is simply called page and close this div element at the end of your footer element which is here so here we add another slash div and we have a page that's all you have to do to declare your yeah, the whole file in this case as a page because we have to link to this page when we come want to come back to our cover we have to give it an ID so also add ID equals let this page be called cover okay and save it now if you want to have a second page or a third page or as many as you want just go to the end of this page and just declare another page diff data role is page and the ID of our second page should be page 1 close the div element and all we have to do now is copy the whole content of page 1 to the end of page 1 the whole content without uh, the diff that all page element just the content but including the header the content and the footer into our second page here and all we have to do now is edit the content of the second page um, this is page one of my personal storybook and the heading was let me cheat the heading was page one okay the heading page one okay and we will deal with the navigation here later but let's first load or reload our app in the browser uh, in, the, in the simulator and see what happens now we have declared two pages one is called cover and another page here on in the same file called page one okay I close the simulator and refresh it Here you see the first page. Uh, the navigation should work because we still have linked to our second file, so this still works. But what is strange here, you just see the contents of the first page in this file because what you see here is index.html and we have developed more content here, but we don't see the content because it is covered in a div data role page tag and this is okay what I first will do now is delete our second file index.2 HTML so that if we click on the button here we should get an error let's delete the file index2 HTML you want to delete of course and the file is gone Let's reload our app in the 
simulator and see what happens if I try to reach the second page. Error loading page, what we expected. Because we deleted the second HTML file, the navigation doesn't work anymore. But here we have declared the same contents as a page in our own file. What we have to do now is simply use the ID of the second page in the link which should lead us to the second page. So in our first page we go to the footer and we exchange the link index to HTML simply with page 1. If we enter this we should come to the page 1 and Firefox OS knows or jQuery knows <laughs> which page to load, uh, which page to display to be more exactly and page 1 is our second page. Okay and the other links remain the same if we click home here on the first page or the left arrow we should come to the same page and remain here and let's go to our second page the second lateral page element to that footer and replace the first link because the first link is the arrow left button we want here to come to the cover again and we call the cover cover so we just enter the ID of the page here also if we click the home button we come to the cover and if th we click the arrow right button on our second page nothing should happen. I save the file again you see index 2 HTML is still deleted there is no such file in the unmodified version we still get the error error loading page but now let's reload the app and see if single page navigation works I click on the right and our page 1 appears magically I click arrow left we're back on the cover right left right left home right home everything works fine you saw that with single page navigation there was also a transition effect while loading the second page and there's one last thing I want to show you you can use different transition effects for example if you add a data transition attribute to your link tags and give it the value of flip for example you have a different transition from one page to the other so let's reload and show how this transition effect looks like you can see there was yeah, a flip and the other effect is slide up slide up save the file reload it and let's see how slide up looks like uh, something is wrong ah okay I must go to the home page slide up this was the slide up effect okay but let's remove the data transition for now and I think the standard transition effect is mm, much better our standard transition effect okay this concludes our part about navigation and what I will show you now is the most commonly used uh, graphical user interfaces um, the elements you can use like checkboxes input text input boxes radio buttons and so on and how they are handled and rendered by jQuery mobile I will use our cover page to demonstrate all the elements and display them here so let's start and I remove the old content here and 
Let's start with simple checkboxes. I have prepared them also here. Um, you can use a checkbox within a label tag. So within this label tag enter an input tag with the type of checkbox and give it a name checkbox-0 in this case and then write down the text which should appear on the right of the checkbox. I think you already know this kind of uh, input element. But now let's see how Firefox OS or jQuery renders this element. I reload and you see the look and feel is the same like with buttons. It looks more app-like to you be used in uh, on a smartphone. In the same way you can also declare radio buttons. So I remove the checkbox here and add two radio buttons instead. They are also placed within label elements and input type equals radio, name equals radio zero. The name is the same because this makes up a checkbox group and I called the different options just option 1 and option 2. Let's save it and see how jQuery renders radio buttons. Very nice, very nice. Let's come to the next element. This is a kind of slider. So add an tag input type uh, uh, type equals range. This is our type, and give it a min value and a max value, minimum and maximum value. That's all we need to define a slider, and the slider is rendered like this. Very nice, very very nice. You can see the value on the left, the current value, and you can slide and it looks very pretty. Now let's come to a few elements you might not already know. The first one I want to show you is called a collapsible. So I enter the code here first and explain it. What did we do? Well, I defined a diff element and gave it the data role of collapsible. And within this div element I defined a header of type 4 and directly beneath this header I entered some text. So let's see how jQuery renders this collapsible. I reload the page and you can see the heading, in this case a heading 4, you can also use heading 1 to heading 6, this is alike, is displayed here, but the content, the text here, isn't displayed. But if you click the header, the collapsible opens or expands and you see the content here. Very good to display much information if you don't have uh, much space. Before I explain the next element, let's see what else you can do with this collapsible or how you can configure this collapsible. Well, I go to the div element with the collapsible and add two other attributes. One is called data collapsed icon and as the name suggests, this will be the icon when the collapsible is collapsed and the other icon, data expanded icon, will become the icon when the collapsible is expanded. The standard is a plus and a minus symbol and we will change this with these two attributes to gear and phone. Okay, I save the file and let's see if it works. I reload and perfect. The collapsed 
icon is a gear and if I expand it, it becomes a phone. This makes actually no sense, but to demonstrate what you can do with this element, it suffices. Very nice. And the last thing we will do with this collapsible is we will add our own theme just for this collapsible. And so we add a data uh, data collapsible theme, I think. Now data content theme attribute and you, rem uh, you remember our own theme was theme D, so I enter a D. Data-content-theme. With this attribute you can tell uh, jQuery Mobile to use your own theme for this collapsible and we use D, our own theme we developed uh, in earlier parts. OK, save, reload in the simulator and Usually, yeah. Here, the whole content of the collapsible is rendered in our own theme, theme D. What is also possible with collapsible is you can um, combine them, or you can you can put one collapsible within another collapsible. <laughs> so you can even display more data on one single page. Let's try this. I just copy this collapsible element and below the text or yeah, below this text I insert the same collapsible. So there's one collapsible within another collapsible. Let's see if this works. I reload. This is our outer collapsible and here you can see in our theme D the new collapsible within another collapsible. Very yeah, very useful feature if you want to display um, much aspects or for example on a setting screen to open more information for the user. Very great. But let's now remove all the collapsibles here and use another, uh, let me show you another element and um, that element is called a flip switch. So what is a flip switch? S let's first show you how it looks like. I re uh, reload the page and this here is a flip switch. It's a kind of switch. You can set it on and off. You might already know this uh, element from iOS, for example. Yeah. And how do we define this flip switch? Simply use a select element. Within the select you can define two options. You can set the value for these options and the text which should be rendered on the flip switch and in the select uh, element give it an ID select based flip switch for example and important is here give it the data role of flip switch the select element with the data role of flip switch and two options included you get this here Let me show you another element, but we won't place this element in the content part of our page, but we will place it in the header bit because it is um, usually used in the header. And this element is also a div element with the data role of navbar for navigation bar. Within this div element you can declare an unordered list with list items and within these list items 
you can place, for example, links. I have placed a link with a data icon, or two links with two data icons, and let's see what this will, how this will render our header. I reload, or I have already reloaded, as you can see. This is a navigation bar at the top of your app, and usually this bar is used for different aspects, to show different as aspects of the currently displayed page. So, um, for example, here we come back to our page, and, or if we, for example, if we have 10 pages, for every 10 pages we have two aspects, and we can select them here. Let's remove the navigation bar for now, and let me show you an element which is very, very cool. We place this element in our content section again. And this element is a panel. So it is a little more complicated than the other elements. You have two parts. First, within a div element, or uh, with the data role of panel, you have a checkbox and two radio buttons. For example, this can be any content. I just copied um, another example. Um, you can also add some text here. Let's add some text. This is some text. So this part is just the content, what you like. And the content placed within a div with the data roll of panel. Um, and that's all. Then you just have to declare a link somewhere on your page with the target. Um, the target of the link must be the ID of your defined panel, in this case my panel. So let's see what this actually is. We reload our app and we see nothing, just the link we defined here, open panel. And if we click the link, wow, a panel is sliding from the left over our content and we can slide it back just by clicking it. This is a very great feature to display much more information on a single page. Yeah, very cool. Just place within this div element, data roll panel, your content you want to display to the user, for example, a whole setting screen where the user can quickly check uh, or set the preferences for the application. And you can open this panel just by clicking a link. Let's remove this panel again and then I'll show you the most interesting widget I think you can use. And it is a table. Well, okay, I inserted the table here. Um, I will show you how to define with features. As you can see, this is at first look just a simple table. I have some table headers, year, reviews, for example, and I have table content, 1941, 100%. Just a simple table for now, but the table has a data role attribute and you might not wonder, the data role is table. It has an ID and the important thing is data mode. This table has a data-mode of column toggle. So what is column toggle? Well, we will 
see this if we reload the example in our page. What do we see here? We see the table, we see the headers of the table and the content. But something is missing. I only see three uh, columns here. Why? Because there is no, not enough space to display the other columns. And the great thing about this uh, data model column toggle is it automatically renders a button above the table and if you click the button you can select the missing columns to display them in the table. Now we have all columns visible or you can remove rank and movie title in this case because why only these two? This is because in the table header tag, the th tag of this column, this column has an attribute called data-priority and a number. Beginning from 1 and data-priority 2 for movie title. So if we, all, um, if we wanted to include also the year column, we would have to enter also the data priority priority tag for this column and give it a 3. If we save it and reload the example in our simulator we should also have three columns we can select from and you can see the columns which have no data priority are displayed directly and the other columns with data priority set can be selected in this pop-up. Very great feature, I think. This is one good way to display table data. This concludes this part of Firefox OS programming and I have uh, shown you how to use single page and multi page navigation and I showed you most of the graphical user interface elements you can use in your apps and if you have if you wonder what attributes you can use for them how you can configure them I couldn't show you every detail of all the elements here just go to uh, I'll copy the or URLs here um, AP api.jQueryMobile.com is the main page where of jQuery Mobile of the API and specifically the widgets I showed you here you can um, see their attributes and how they are used on api.jQueryMobile.com slash category slash widgets. Thank you. This concludes part 7 of Firefox OS programming. And from now on, we will we will uh, speak about web APIs, and I show I'll show you how you can use them, how you can use the features of the phone, for example, getting the current position of the user, or using the camera, and such cool things you would expect from uh, smartphone programming. Thank you, and see you next time.